Hi friends, so glad you're here to be with me for our Yes You Can Draw club meeting. This is club meeting number 12. I'm Pat Nepley, I'm your master artist. I'm with you through all of these club meetings so that you can learn how to draw. I hope you brought a friend along to join us. Whether you've drawn for a long time or you're just starting to learn to draw, there's something new that you can learn every time that we meet. Now we're continuing our series on color. Last time we were together, we talked about the primary colors and the secondary colors. And we're going to learn a little bit more today. So let me tell you what it is you'll need for today's meeting. You'll need a basic set of color pencils, a box of crayons, anything over 16 crayons is great, a couple of sheets of white paper, a sheet of some darker color paper. It could be construction paper, brown, black, dark gray, navy blue, that's fine. A regular pencil and the color wheel that you made the last time that we were together. And that's where we're going to start today. Here's our basic color wheel with our six colors. The three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, and the three secondary colors, orange, violet, and green. So if you have your color wheel from last time handy, we're going to be looking at that today because the first thing we're going to talk about is complementary colors. That means the color opposite. Every primary color has a secondary color that's across from it on the color wheel. So the complementary color to yellow is violet. The complementary color to orange is the primary blue. And the complementary color to red is the secondary color, green. So you'll notice each primary has a secondary that is its opposite. Now why is it important to learn complementary colors? Well, because complementary colors next to each other creates a lot of visual excitement. In fact, artists often use complementary colors and it's a technique in their chalk drawing or in their oil paintings. In fact, Miss Gloria, our friend from the See the Light drawings, makes beautiful drawings with pastels and she understands the value of placing complementary colors next to each other. Let's think about this. Where have you seen red and green next to each other a lot? That's right, at Christmas time. There's decorations that are red and green. When those two complementary colors are next to each other, it creates visual excitement, and you can really see it. I want to show you a painting by a very famous artist named Vincent Van Gogh, and he uses orange and blue to have a really dynamic painting. This painting is called Night Cafe, and it shows a scene of a building in the night sky. The building is a yellowish orange, and the sky is a violet blue, these two opposites. Notice the cobblestones are also made of strokes of orange against strokes of blue to create a lot of excitement in that painting. Look how that building just pops out from that night sky. Artists often use complementary colors in their blending as well. And I'm going to explain that to you later on in today's club meeting. Okay, so we have all of these great colors. We know about color opposites. What about all the colors in between? That's something called intermediate colors. When a primary is mixed with a secondary, the color in between is called intermediate color. So if you mix yellow with green, you make Yellow-green, that's right. If you mix red with orange, you get red-orange. If you look at any box of crayons, you'll see lots of intermediate colors. And there's way more than can fit on this one wheel. All you have to do is go into a paint store, and you can see all the swatches of color. Lots and lots of intermediate colors. God gave us a beautiful universe filled with color. In fact, it reminds me of a story in the Old Testament. If you go into the book of Genesis, you'll see a story about Jacob, who had a lot of sons, but he was especially attached to his youngest son, Joseph, that he had by his beloved wife, Rachel. And in Genesis 37.3, it says, 
Now Israel, that was a name that Jacob had before it was changed to Jacob. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was his son of his old age. And he made for him a tunic of many colors. Do you know that story? The many colored coat that Joseph wore? I'm sure it had a lot of threads of beautiful colors woven together. It must have been amazing. It shows you that color is important to God, too. He talks about it all through the scriptures. Every color you can name in the gems and stones that are used in the temple and the beautiful colors of the world he gave us. Now, after you learn about intermediate colors, you might think, what about a color like pink? I don't see it anywhere here. Mmm, that's a great question. Pink is actually a tint of red. Another word for color is hue. H-U-E. Hue. Red is a pure hue or color. But if I want to make pink, it's simply combining white with a pure hue. So if you want a very light blue, you would mix the pure color blue with white. Now it's easier to see in painting. If you go into a paint store and you watch how they mix a deep rich color with white, it becomes a tint. It's a little trickier with drawing, but the white of your paper becomes the white that you would add. So let's demonstrate how this is done. Grab any of your color pencils. I'm going to use red. And if you look here on my paper, I've gone from a very light tint. I've barely touched the paper so that the color from the paper, a creamy white, comes through. And that's what makes it pink. But as I add more pressure going down, more and more pressure, it's the pure color red. Now, what about if I want a dark shade of a color? To add white creates a tint. So pink is a tint of red. But what if I want a dark one? That would be a shade, in which case I would add my pencil, which is a very dark gray or black. By laying down red and then shading over top, with the black or dark gray, I then get a shade of red. So a tint of red is adding white. A shade of red is adding black. Same for all your other colors. You could do this in green, blue, orange, violet. This is called a color value scale. Do you remember when we talked about value and you used pressure on your pencil to go from the lightest value white all the way to the very darkest gray you could do? That was a value scale. This is a color value scale going from the lightest value, pale, pale, pale pink, down to the darkest value where we're adding dark gray or black to the red. You should practice this at home so that you really understand all the shades of red that you can get from that one pencil by changing your pressure. A tint or a shade of a hue. Now what happens if you want to have a dark background for your paper instead of white? We know that white paper is kind of like mixing white with the hue and it'll come through. Of course, if you press really hard, you'll get a dark color, but the pale pink will come through the white paper. What happens with a dark paper? Well, the same thing. So you should experiment with what happens to the color when it's on dark paper. Now, in order to do this, I like to use my favorite tool, crayons. Crayons aren't just for little children. Crayons are a great tool to use because the color is really rich and vibrant, and you can do a lot of color blending. But you can't erase a crayon. So this is great for exercises. Now you can do some final drawings in crayon, but for today, we're just going to do some exercises using crayon on some darker paper. You know how Miss Pat loves to draw apples. Here's a pastel drawing of an apple. And we did a contour study of apples earlier in our club meetings. 
Well, today we're going to do an apple on a darker colored piece of paper to see how it impacts the color. Because we're adding a dark value, the paper, to the color. So here's what you're going to do. Take one of your darker pieces of paper, construction paper's fine, and using your red crayon, you're going to do a quick contour of an apple. Now, you don't have an apple in front of you. If you do, that's great. But if you don't, just do it from your imagination. I'm going to make a contour of an apple. I'm using brown paper so you can see it. Now I need to fill that in with a medium tone of red. Well, you know how to color in. You've been doing it since you were little. You can either use a basic grip or an overhand grip, whatever you like. And you're going to create a nice, even tone on the apple. Now, the great part about crayons, you can cover a lot of area in a little bit of time. But it's not going to look real if it's just one flat tone. Some of the brown is coming through, mixing with the red. And it doesn't look as vibrant. An apple, this my red apple, will have all warm tones. So I'm going to get my other warm colors. I'll grab a red orange, an orange, let's see, and a yellow, my warm colors. I'm going to go right over where I just was and blend with my crayons to get a richer color right over top. Now, an important decision, as you remember from the club meeting we talked about value is determining where your light source is. So for today, let's say our light source is coming from the upper right. That means that side of the apple will be lighter. So if I have a dark paper and dark crayon, how do I get light on that side? I'll use some of my lighter crayons, like my yellows, on that side of the apple. Nice and warm. I'll blend in some more of the lighter orange, another warm color, right next to that yellow. And for highlight, I'll use the lightest yellow I have, or white. Again, the light source is in the upper right. White crayon shows up great on dark paper. Now, here's where your complementary color comes in. When you want to make a shade on a color, sometimes adding black can be too harsh. And so artists will use the complement of that color. So what's the complement of red? That's right, green. So I'm going to take a green crayon, and in order to create the shaded part of the apple opposite from my light source, I will use some light strokes of green, the complement to create the shadow. It's not as harsh as black. And by coloring it on that left side, helps the apple look 3D. Now all I need is some other color to put my apple on a tabletop and maybe a little stem. Now because where the stem comes out is also a little shadow, take my complementary color, my green, and lightly create the shadow. Remember, you can't erase crayon, so if it's too much, go back with your original color and blend over top. And so that's how you can use color blending of the warm colors to create the apple. Use your complement to create shadow. And lighter colors in the same family, warm, to create your highlight. Now you see down here on this paper, I used a dark gray piece of paper. You'll notice how the dark gray does come through the color. It's not as bright as this apple, but by layering the color, I can make that apple jump right off the page. Okay, that's all we have for today. Some basics about color. We learned that every color on the color wheel has an opposite called its complement, and it's important to know the complementary colors for when we do color blending. We also learned that another word for color is hue, and that when you add white to a color, you get a tint,
like pink is a tint of red, and when you add gray or black to a color, you get a shade. All important for as you become a great artist, because yes, you can draw. Can't wait to see you next time on Yes, You Can Draw. Bye-bye.